This video is called the cross section of the spinal cord. This is going to be important if you'd like to understand the origins of the brachial plexus. I'm going to start by drawing this butterfly or H-shaped region here. And this is going to represent gray matter. Gray matter can be divided into dorsal horns and ventral horns. In the spinal cord, gray matter is surrounded by this outer shell of white matter, which I'm drawing in right now. And I'm leaving some gaps because we're going to have information that's both coming into the spinal cord and also leaving from the spinal cord. The first structure we'll draw is the dorsal root. And on the dorsal root, you're going to find a bump. And the bump is called the dorsal root ganglion. I'll also draw in a ventral root. And note that these two roots combine to form a spinal nerve. And you have 31 pairs of spinal nerves in the body. Each spinal nerve divides into a larger ventral primary ramus and a smaller dorsal primary ramus. I'm just speeding up the video here so I can draw in the same structures on the opposite side. Everything here is bilateral. And we're going to go ahead and give you some examples of information that would take these different pathways. The first example is going to be a sensory neuron from the anterior surface of the body or one of the limbs. So here we have a sensory neuron traveling through the ventral primary ramus along the spinal nerve and sensory information splits and enters through the dorsal root to the spinal cord. The dorsal root ganglion is where all of the cell bodies of those sensory neurons will lie. Now, if we have a muscle on the anterior surface of the body or in one of the limbs that we'd like to send information to, instructions to contract, the cell body of this neuron lies in the ventral horn of the spinal cord, and the neuron will exit through the ventral root along the spinal nerve and travel along the ventral primary ramus. On the opposite side, what I'll do is I'll draw in a sensory neuron from the back of the body, so from the skin on the back, for example. And that again would take the dorsal primary ramus, spinal nerve, and dorsal root. And a motor neuron to supply a muscle in the deep back would take the same pathway to return. When we talk about the roots of the brachial plexus, what we're referring to are the ventral primary rami from C5, C6, C7, C8, and T1.